What's going on to all my Foundation fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with my weekly recap, breakdown, and review of the latest episode of Apple TV Plus Foundation. We're breaking down episode 8 which was titled The Missing Piece. An episode in which I feel like there were some pieces missing here but I always say Lee Pace to the rescue because Brother Day has a journey in this episode and we're breaking it all down here in this spoiler review but before we dive into it all make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel well, welcome to the community consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content if you all enjoyed this spoiler discussion of episode 8 of foundation well make sure to like and share the review it really helps out the channel a lot but I also appreciate the support and in those comments as we've done for the last eight weeks what did you think about the episode your pros your cons your thoughts your theories what was your favorite plot out of the three that we got in this episode and what you hope to see in the final two episodes of season one of foundation let's talk about it in the comments ladies and gentlemen so just as I always do do, just share with you all my initial thoughts coming off of the episode. Last week and this week are kind of hit or miss for me, guys. I'm not going to lie. The As I always say every single week, whenever Lee Pace, Brother Day is on screen, I always love that stuff. Him, him and Dermazel, their conversations, Halima, what happens to her in this episode, the lies and deception on the spiral path that he went on, all this stuff was fascinating. But unfortunately, Salvar, Farah, the ship... Hugo, is he coming back? The man can't be killed. That stuff was a little stagnant. I feel like we just keep repeating the same narrative there. And speaking of keep repeating, man, I was, as if you all remember my first three episodes, or first two episodes, I was in love with Gal. The show has really put her on the back burner. I, I know it's a slow burn. I know from what you all have said in the comments, she's very pivotal, critical to the to the actual novels. But man, I just feel like she has just been stuck in the same, literally she's been stuck in the same place since we've seen her since episode two. But her story just, and hopefully after what happens in this episode, we can propel her to somewhere else going back to her homeland. But those two stories were just the weakest elements to me. But we're going to break it all down. Again, let me know your highs, your lows, thoughts, theories, in the comment section but let's break this down by what I think was the least interesting element of the episode let's start off with this flashback that we get on Anacreon which shows us a young fair and we already heard her tell us the story so I don't know if it was necessarily I'm not gonna lie it didn't do anything for me to visually see her brother die in front of her I know what the show was intending to do but it's just like she or we already knew that as an audience she lost her brother she lost her family she lost her whole planet but we see this which I don't know if that was necessarily it didn't work for me, but let me know what you all thought about that opening. But we see, again, the destruction of her plan and, again, seeing her brother die in front of her. And it's within this scene that really, again, it feels repetitive. She just, We just continue to know that she's on this mission. She doesn't care who, what they think about her, who's going to be affected by this. She wants to destroy the Empire, and she's willing to do whatever it takes to complete her mission. Which brings us to, again, as expected, as I mentioned weeks ago, this man cannot die. Hugo, he's still alive. He makes this beacon call to his homeland to help him and help Selvar get away from Ferris. So again, Hugo, this man can't be killed. He will be the last man standing by the, the first two fake out deaths that we got with him. But that happens. We move on with Selvar and Lewis. They manage to escape from Farah for a brief second. They go into the ship. They find out and figure out how to do the jumps and how they have to plug themselves into the ship. And they want to ensure the survival of Terminus. So we see Selvar being the hero of our story. She's willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that her people are safe. Which brings us to, you know, we get this kind of brief scene on terminus with her mother talking to one of the commanders uh this is simply saying and we knew this from weeks ago and, and I, I feel like this plot has been kind of forgotten about but the vault if you all remember very early on in the season the force field of the vault is continuing to spread and make its way to the terminus people so she briefly says that to him and i'm assuming by next week it's going to probably go out of control and we're going to have to get selvar there to figure out what's going on with the mystery of the vault so we get a little bit of the vault in this episode but again that that main thing that got me attracted to the first two episodes, The Vault, is just like been forgotten about so far. But wrapping up this narrative, which, like I said, I think was the weakest one, we go back to Selvar as Lewis is unfortunately killed uh, by the hands of Farah. They have a fight. We see Hugo. He eventually, his beacon call makes it out. They attack the ship, but it's too late because the ship makes a jump to. I guess we'll find out next week. So, and, and again, I think she programmed the ship to go to Terminus, but again, we know the ship's navigation system is out of whack. So we'll find out where the jump takes them. But like I said, as a narrative, as the story goes, 
it's starting to get stale to me. Again, I feel for Farah, but I feel like we're doing the same song and dance. We're seeing what her mission is. I already know as an audience, she's willing to do whatever it takes, but we don't have to keep repeating that. Selvar, her narrative is just kind of stagnant for me. And again, Hugo is just the, the irdestructible character of the show. The man can't be killed. But let me know what you all thought about that narrative. I thought I was the weakest of the episode, which brings me to the second weakest part of this episode, which is all the stuff that we get with Harry and Gail finding out about him going back to his homeland. So we see them having this conversation and she talks about more in depth of her abilities, how she's had this since she, as long as she can remember and her being, becoming a mathematician, it was all kind of brought together because she didn't want the destruction of her, you know, her homeland with the destruction of the water overtaking her planet. Very similar to Harry's motivation, very similar to a lot of our characters. They're all, you know, motivated to save their people. So that's kind of, we, we learn a little bit more backstory of her and what motivated her to become the mathematician, to become the genius that we know that she is. Harry tells her that it's in the most importance that we get to my homeland, Helicon, because it's as important as Terminus in the first foundation, because this is the second foundation, ladies and gentlemen. Surprise, surprise, there's another planet that Harry wants to, or his planet, he wants to go back there because there's a secret. There's something very important on Helicon that has to bring them to the planet. Gal, she doesn't want to hear any of that, ladies and gentlemen. He is willing to have her destroy the ship. He's willing for her to sacrifice her life. He doesn't give her the secret. What is so important on Helicon? Why do we have to go there? What's the importance? There's another vault there. I guess we won't find out because we see she's willing to like break out of the ship, which I thought her trying to break through the door. She's like, this isn't going to work. But eventually it does work because he eventually allows her to go into a pod and, and she wants to go back to her homeland, which I don't know if her homeland is still going to be alive because we know that, you know, she predicted that her, her homeland was going to be destroyed uh, by their, uh, you know, uh, negligence to protect their people. So it'll be interesting to see if her family's still alive because it's been 30 something years she's been there. So she's hit it there. It's going to be a very long journey, but Man, she is just, I feel like she's been in a, in a sleeping mode for most of this show, whether it be sleeping to get to the Emperor and the Empire, whether it was sleeping for her to get to where she's at now, she's always sleeping. So hopefully we can wake her up and get her more involved in the main plot. But let me know what you all thought of all the situation that we learned, Helicon being the second foundation. What are your thoughts on that? Let's talk about it. But I think this is easily the best not only part of this episode but honestly the best part of the show at least for me because Lee Pace is fantastic as he goes on his walk down the spiral and all this stuff to me was just so rich the writing was there the performances were there but let's break it down as we know and we're told he's going to get no food no water no rest and he can't even have his protective bracelets they take out his nanobots as he has to go on this path with no help whatsoever and it's on this path that brother day he sees the struggle of the people he sees people falling breaking down he sees people dying right in front of him and it's at this point that he meets i don't even know if they give him a name but he has like this friend that he meets that kind of lifts him and kind of gives him a lending hand on this path i was thinking that this character was like a hallucination. I thought that it was going to maybe be like Dear Mazel, like under this cloak and she was going to be protecting him the whole time. But I assume it wasn't a metaphor. It wasn't a hallucination. This was an actual person he came across. And it's within this moment, his friend, we see Brother Day for the first time all season. He has some sincerity. He actually cared for this person as he eventually falls and he comes down to his knees and he eventually dies. And again, seeing Brother Day give him like a, you know, a proper uh, memorial and bury him. He really did care for that person, which again, made me think was it all in his mind but again it was a real person but I did like that sincerity and that kind of humanity that we have yet to see from Brother Day uh, throughout the different Cleon uh, you know regeneration system so I really kind of enjoyed that moment that we got with Brother Day as he eventually makes his way to the cave and we are to assume that he's as we'll talk about him seeing this uh, the, the marks from the three mothers but I got to go back to just what I was thinking I thought Brother Day was going to kill this guy, cheat the system, you know, work to his advantage. And we'll talk about him cheating the system here. But he gives his his experiences to the women in charge. He talks about him seeing the three and they bring up the birth root flower and Brother Day. He, connect, he connects it to him and his brothers. And he we hear the women hear this story and they just say, we believe you. You've, you've walked the path of the spiral. You're, you know, you're 
chosen. You've been part of this path and you completed this journey. And they were very impressed by us and compliment. And they, they say to everyone, no one in this religious faith will ever stand against you because you have beat, you know, this big path and you have defeated it and we stand with you and we won't get in your way. And that even includes Halima. So she's shocked. She's like, wow, I can't believe you really did this, which brings us to one of the most like really great moments. Again, this was the best part of the episode. All the stuff in this scene and all the stuff in this kind of moment in the story plot was really rich. As Duramazel and Halima, they talk about her path and how she grew to go against her own system and how 11,000 years ago is when she went on this path. And she and this is where Halima learns the origins of Duramazel. So all that stuff was fascinating. But it was in this moment that she learns that she was sent there to be killed by Duramazel. And she is just heartbroken. She's poor her heart out. She's crying. She doesn't want to kill Halima, but she's obviously programmed to do this and she can't go against her demands. So it's in this moment that Halima tells her, you have a soul. Regardless of you being the last of your kind, being a robot, you have more of a soul than your emperor. And she appreciates that moment. But unfortunately, she tells her, you know, I poisoned you by the skin contact. It's going to be a painless death. But I, you know, she appreciated her. They, they had a sincere moment, which again, was almost parallel to what Brother Day had with the gentleman that he met on his path on a spiral. So I really love that conversation. I really wish that, you know, that, that the character Halima didn't die. Uh, you know, she says it's, it's death of natural causes. And I'm always a fan of the theory of like, if you don't see the person die, they're not really dead. But I'm assuming that that is the last of Halima. But who knows, you know, H Hugo can survive everything. Maybe she can. And maybe, you know, she didn't poison her like she told her she did. You know, maybe in her system, if she says it, it's true, and they can read that she did it, but she really didn't do it. I don't know, but I, I think she is dead. But neither here nor there. Let's end the episode with the big surprise, which I'm like, I don't trust Brother Day. And it's in this moment that Dermazel goes to him after he's eating. He feels like a brand new man. He's like, I did the walk of the path. I got the people on my side. But it's in this moment that Dermazel calls him out on his fake vision that he told the women in charge. It was all made up, ladies and gentlemen. He saw the flower in Daramazel's room, and he made up that whole story. He did, you know, he, he beat the path. He made it to the end. But he, when he went in that cave, the three mothers didn't have anything to say to him because he's empty, he's soulless, and that was such a great moment to end the episode because it just shows you what he's willing to do to win. He beat Halima, but what did he do to beat her? He cheated the system, he lied to them, and what a great way. And Dermazel knows that, and I love how she called him out. And again, I told you all, Halima, she was getting really risky with him the way she was talking to him, and that ended up, you know, killing her. We'll see again where that plot goes. But again, I love the stuff Whitley Pace uh, as Brother Day and Dermazel. I love their conversations. I just love that character as a whole. I'm talking about Dermazel and Brother Day, but I just love the complexity between those two characters. And I'm telling you all, she will turn on the Emperor. She will turn on them. As we talked about weeks ago, her maybe altering Brother Dusk and making him a lot different, or Brother Don, I'm sorry, making him a lot different than his previous brothers and his current brothers. She has a plan. I think she's in cahoots with Halima, as I mentioned last week, and we'll see where that goes. But that was easily the best part of the episode. The other two plots, a little didn't work for me entirely where I feel like we're doing the same thing. I I'm glad we didn't get much of Brother Dawn's story because as you all know, I'm not the biggest fan of the performances. I like the narrative, but the performances aren't really elevating the narrative for me. But overall, like I said, last week, this week's are kind of hit or miss. But if it wasn't for Brother Day, Duramazel, and all the stuff with Halima and all that, this show would be not as interesting to me as it is. But though that plot is really kind of keeping me invested, I'm hoping episodes 9 and 10 really wrap things up in regards to letting Let's get Gail on a good path in the main narrative. What's going on with Helicon and all this stuff with the Second Foundation? Will they be able to save, save Terminus? Only time will tell. But again, I'm a little iffy on that episode, but I cannot deny the greatness from Lee Pace, Dermazel, Brother Day, Halima. That was fantastic. But hey, that's just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments, your highs, your lows, your pros, your cons, your thoughts and theories for the weeks ahead. And let's talk about it in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. If you stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate every single one of you all. Before you leave, make sure to like the video, share the video. Of course, leave your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that that bell that way you don't miss any of my other future reviews hope you enjoyed this review hope you're staying safe as you all can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel check out my other content we'll see you in the next video